Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. This is going to be a different one. This is uh, not Kwamfi in the Lage Landen, but it this is Kwamfi uh, in the Lowlands. Yeah, we're the Kwamfi Lowlanders, uh, as you could say. Um, we're going to... Uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm going first. Uh, I'm Tim. I'm running uh, Quantum Dates. This is my face reveal. <laughs> uh, dogs! And on, yeah, I'm dogs. Yeah, yeah. I hope you don't uh, chase my kneecaps uh, once the price drops. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, and I'm doing this together with... Uh, Yarno? Yeah. Yarno. yeah. Um, I have no secondary job besides being a Quantum Lounge admin. Um, this, this is going to be our little English um, venting spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, We're, we're going to try this on for size. We're going to try this out today, see how it, how it feels, see, see how it goes. We're going to attempt to, to talk about an hour, <clears throat> yeah, primarily an hour so. uh, in, uh, pertaining to, to stuff around quant. Um, yeah. yeah. The, yeah, we've the, been the, doing this um, in Dutch first, so this is, it's not really an Ospin, we're just trying to make an English version as well, which yeah. is not going to be a copy of the Dutch uh, uh, podcast, but we're trying, trying to do the same thing as we do in Dutch, but then in English, because uh, we got a lot of feedback and inputs from people, at least on Instagram, asking us for an English version, so, well... We're trying to do that, and I apologize for my English at first. It's not my native language, so uh, if I choke somewhere, if I, if I mess up, yeah. I'll try to. Uh, well, I'm, I'm doing yes. my best. Where I S- can. Same here, same here. I mean, talking in Dutch on finances, talking English on finances. If English is not your first language, it's, it's just difficult, and there's so much different terminology. And the same thing that we have in Dutch that we don't know the Dutch words for some English terms. We're probably yeah. gonna have the same with uh, the English and the Dutch and the stuff around it. But that's okay. Exactly. That's yeah. okay. We're going to do our best. Um, some logistics. The, this English video, as you can see, is posted on... The, there, there's a there's a boxer puppy running around my house. This will happen a lot. There's also a baby that will also interrupt a lot. Um, it's the same chaos as in the Dutch podcast. It's just a different <laughs> language. <laughs> that's, that's part of our charm. No. Yeah. Um, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to upload this video, the English one. Give, give, give me a second. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Dog is now in the bench, so he can chill a bit. Um, we're going to post this video also on the Dutch YouTube channel. Yeah. And I'm going to create separate uh, playlists. Um, and then we'll see in the future how it goes, if we're going to um, separate it all together or keep it together. We'll, we'll see. Um, yeah, and the, the same will go for uh, Telegram. Currently, we have an archive on Telegram, which is basically just a channel where we upload all the audio files um, every week. So people can listen back on Telegram. It's better when you want to listen on your phone. Uh, we'll probably also create an English version of that. So we keep the Dutch and the English audio files separated. Uh, so that's for the logistics. Uh, there's more to come but we're still working that out but at this point this is how we're going to do it pilot episode uh, tim this is the pilot yeah this is a pilot episode as well and on a pump day on a on a pump on a, day on a pump day yeah yeah on a pump yeah. day yeah Th- this morning we woke up everybody was expecting price to damp back to like what <laughs> 90 euros yesterday or something like that something like that dollars yeah and now we are still at looking at CoinGecko 114. So we're correcting a little bit uh, from the high. The high was 125 euros. Sorry, we talk euros here. At yeah. least, yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> no burger tokens for us. We're not traders. Um, yeah, we're European, so we're not talking burger tokens. So, sorry, freedom units. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, that's good. Uh, but yeah, obviously price action is important, but just let's first introduce ourselves a little bit, I think, before we uh, straight into uh, price action, which I'm not that interested in, honestly. Price is, especially at the, at the moment, it's, it's all short-term noise. Uh, people are panicking or being <laughs> euphoric over nothing, if yeah. you ask me. Uh, so just let's first introduce ourselves a bit uh, so people know what they're looking at. Uh, yeah, let's dox ourselves a bit. Kick it off, yeah. yeah, kick okay. it off. 
Well, I'm Tim. Uh, I'm 25 years old. I'm running Quantum Dates, so uh, I'm the person who you see a lot on Instagram. I'm also doing that, but Lexip uh, from Belgium. Well, I, I was a student uh, until well, yeah, late September. Then I graduated. I uh, graduated in urban studies, which is kind of uh, an offspin of uh, ur uh, human geography and urban planning. And it focuses on cities and urban areas. And that's also where I'm going to start my first job uh, at the end of this month. And I haven't retired yet. I'm just 25 years old. I'm not going to dox my quant stack. It's all irrelevant. Uh, but I've been a student. And well, a couple of years ago, when I really got more serious about having part-time jobs next to my studies, I figured out that, well, if you actually want to make some money, you shouldn't be working, uh, especially with the tax regime here in the Netherlands, where you pay at some point, you pay 50% of your income. It's not going to yeah. work out. So you need to invest. Um, so I started doing that. <laughs> and oh, pay 1.5% just... interest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or yeah. taxes, sorry. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I figured, well, I, I, I need to get my head around investing. How, how does this work? You see all those inspirational posts on social media that, like uh, having a certain mindset and stuff I was like okay fair enough perhaps i should uh, i should work on myself here so i just started casually investing in 2019 yeah 2019 or so and well my first investments were on this dutch robin hood it's called bucks uh it, it's pretty similar to etoro and then robin hood and all those other kind of online brokers that you have started investing a little bit there worked with leverage so you could like five for 10x your uh, your stocks sometimes it works perfectly but i've also lost a lot of money i saw wire cards <laughs> in the summer of um, 2020 i think it went from 140 uh, euro or dollars i think uh to 0 0.5 so i basically lost all my money there uh i just figured out that well this wasn't really it like working with leverage on some stocks and i didn't really dare to invest a lot of money into it to just put like 500 or something I was like, okay, if I lose it, it's bad, but it's just a couple of days of work. It's not too bad. And then uh, in April uh, 2020, my uh, broker actually launched uh, launched um, a crypto platform. It's Bucks, the Bucks crypto uh, platform. You can also invest in Bucks token, by the way. It's, it's just another kind of platform. And I was like, hey, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, I always had the plan to invest in crypto. So I knew this is going to be the future, but I never really had to... I never really dared to do it. Mm. And then after the, the, the March crash, after COVID, uh, when well, Bitcoin plummeted back to 4K, I think the entire market just completely well, got evaporated. I was like, this is actually a pretty good point probably to enter crypto. So I started, uh, bought my first Bitcoin, uh, bought my first Ethereum's. And that's where the adventure started. I never, I never heard of Quant. I didn't know what it was. I just knew XRP. I just knew <clears> Bitcoin. I just knew Ethereum. I was a complete, a complete newbie for most of 2020, uh, until eventually I, I, I went deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole, and I found out that, that crypto is actually much bigger than those big tokens. I didn't even know what Binance was honestly until like January 2021. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the type of noob I am. <laughs> Uh, but then somehow I, I ran into Quant. Someone uh, gave me a tip on that uh, box platform, so that uh, Dutch Robin Hood in one of the crypto channels. I was like, hey, Quant, this sounds interesting because I never heard anyone talking about this. Uh, and I just I started doing research. I started going into it. And um, I read mm. somewhere else that you need to download Telegram and just talk with the people there and, and ask questions to people and just kind of socialize. So that's what I started doing. And then I completely got into the quant rabbit hole at some point. I entered the Dutch chat where people were very welcoming and inviting. And uh, for some reason, a lot of Dutch people are in quant. So there was a lot of expert knowledge in my native language, which was very convenient. Uh, not that my English is bad, but it's just more convenient with you know, people from your own country just talking to you. Um, and that's how it started for me. And then uh, it went deeper and deeper and deeper. And at, some certain, at a certain point, you're just all in. <laughs> Uh, that's how it went. Yeah. So that's a bit about me. What about you, Jorna? How did it go? Yeah. Thanks for that. Um, I'm 37. Um, married ish. It's not really married. It's oh, whatever. Um, two children, Nikita and Damien. Damien is uh, like, what, what, week and a half old? Nikita is four. 
We've got a boxer, as you just uh, heard, boxer puppy. Um, smoke. Smoke. Yeah, indeed. Um, they're all a handful, but very entertaining. I used to be in the Marines back when I was younger. Um, left that in 2013 to study psychology. Got my bachelor degree in psychology. And that was also the moment when I started realizing that if I ever wanted to stop working, <laughs> I needed to do something else than, 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 than wasting my time so other people can make money of my skills. And uh, Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week, that was like the, 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 the final push for me to, to, to start looking into investing. Um, my dad once said, there's like two ways to become a millionaire. And that's either um, become an entrepreneur and start selling French fries or something like that. <laughs> or a um, burger joint. You know, yeah, think. yeah, exactly. A burger joint. Yeah, in, in, in Dutch, uh, we call it a free tent. A snack bar. <laughs> yeah, a snack bar, yeah. Um, so either that or you go, uh, go into stocks. Um, so eventually what I did was I went into stocks. Um, at first I wanted to get into Tesla, but we do not in the Netherlands have uh, a trading platform. We didn't have that back then that allowed the buying of fractional shares, which meant that um, whenever I invested money, I needed to wait until I could buy um, whole shares. That was, was very, very interesting. So I did some, uh, some research and I bought some some cheaper stock um, with high dividends, very high risk. And I made a small portfolio with that until a certain point. I met somebody when I was working in a vape shop and he told me, yo bro, you need to buy XRP. I was like, okay. So I did some research and um, it looked a bit weird to me. I was always very skeptical um, regarding crypto because mostly Bitcoin doesn't have a very good reputation still. And when I got into contact with XRP, when somebody tipped that to me, then the entire market just dumped because that was also during COVID. <laughs> From a colleague of mine, I reached out to him. I knew he was into the, the altcoins and stuff. He made his, his job out of it. And I asked him about XRP. And the first thing, and the only thing he sent me on that topic was a GIF. Um, with a monkey stealing some person's money. I was like, okay, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, so I asked him, what would you advise? What should I get then? And then he showed me Quant. And he got me some links to the Quantfi Lounge and the Dutch group and uh, treasury model, tokenomics model, and Gilbert's resume. Took me about half a day of reading um, that I needed to get red pilled. And um, kept digging, joined council, and all that stuff. And within a week, I was all in. And uh, fast. yeah, it, it took me more than um, like four or five months to go all in. You know, you, you know what it was, Tim? It, the, the fact that there were patents. The track record of Gilbert, even Guy from uh, Coin Bureau, said yeah. Gilbert has the, the the most impressive resume he has ever seen. Well, I think that's that's a compliment from him. I think he does his research pretty pretty thoroughly. decently. Yeah. yeah, thoroughly. Yeah. Um, but 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 just those two factors, the patents, and then the treasury model with the tokenomics on top of it, I haven't ever hadn't ever seen a tokenomics model or whatever, but it just made so much logical sense. And mm -hmm. that's also my um, intelligence, so to speak, seeing the logic and the purpose and, and the whole picture of stuff. I'm not good with numbers or uh, you're going to laugh about that and write in the comments more often than not. Um, but, 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 but I do see pictures and I can connect dots and, 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 and seeing that and what it's offering and what it's solving being the interoperability problem Mm -hmm. um, that just clicked in my brain and yeah. um, 
staying in stocks just stupid from that point on uh, yeah so 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 here we are what two years in yeah for me a little more than well more than a year uh actually yesterday was the day that i joined telegram uh one year ago so, i saw uh, that i saw that very uh, it's the third of February. Yeah, so the second of February, two twenty twenty one. I joined uh, Telegrams. I was in Quant earlier, but I did. Your first message was why damp? No, no was, way. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. You know. I, no, actually, uh, no. Uh, you actually introduced yeah. yourself. Yeah, I, I introduced myself. Yeah. That's super special on Telegram because so many people just come in. Why damp? Why pamp? When move? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, I had no idea how to behave on Telegram, and actually, yeah, it, it worked. No, um, yeah, I, I was I was um, ink once before that. That was at the point where I was just throwing in the Dutch chat. Actually, we uh, developed a metaphor for just just throwing shit against the wall and see what sticks. It is actually uh, an English expression. Oh, okay. Well, then it's an English expression. Yeah. At, at least that was exactly what I was doing. I was just throwing money against the wall and see what sticks. And at that the point, trader everything... tactic. Yeah, actually, that, that was at a very good moment in the entire market because everything I did just just printed money, uh, which was brilliant. Uh, but for some reason, I also uh, entered quants there. Uh, and I just got more interested in it than in all the other tokens because I, I just noticed that barely anyone was talking about it. it. Just and when something is having such a good community with so many people who are highly engaged in it, you barely see any engagement on social media. Nothing on YouTube except for I think Kevin Cage was talking about it. Um, perhaps even, he, other even he was late, and even he was kind of late. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, and, just a couple of other people i Anders. just noticed that something yeah and Anders was i just early. noticed something was different here and, and that really drew my attention and um that eventually made me go all in then uh, i just sold all the other tops of all the crypto so i just wrote things out i i bought polka dot when it was like six dollars i think and <laughs> i sold it when it was at 36 37 something like that even 40. uh bitcoin the same story i, I sold it at what did it hit like 60k in april i saw it at 60k i was like okay this is too euphoric we're not going to hit 100k and i did it with other stuff and i put all those profits back into quants which was a 40 dollar stable coin at the moment and people were losing hope and faith well I, I was only growing my faith because reading into it every single day uh, connecting dots is also one of my strengths i think i'm also not good with numbers but i do manage to see systems i do manage to see how ecosystems work how processes function uh, and how you can connect dots and how a connects to b and that connects to c and well what the relationships are there and that's something you need if you're working with interoperability uh, which is trying to connect all networks together so yeah that's a bit about us um and well yeah you're probably here because you've seen this on on quantum days the instagram and um or because we dumped yeah. it in the quamfy lounge or and exactly. in account chill and i'm gonna dump it everywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah nice um but yeah, yeah where, where should we start this pilot episode talk about quants or are we going to focus more on what's happening this week what should we do um i'm, I'm, I'm not sure i just noticed that um on a website of quant network if you go to the uh, well it's, it's quant.network yeah. isn't it um yeah they just published the 2.1.7 um Dave. update it's, it yeah. reads Overledger 2.1.7 makes smart contract creation easy. New release enables the deployment of QRC20 smart contracts. Contacts, smart contacts. Yeah. After a good quant, uh, how do you call that? Tradition? Typo yeah, in the header. Probably going to uh, delete Take it down again. <laughs> yeah, take it down. Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, smart contacts and payment capabilities on February 3rd. Um, I'll, I'll put it in the description so you can uh, can, can read it yourself. Yeah, it will um, probably have been taken down at that point. Yeah, but uh, the bullets. Screenshot um, it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> no, um, I can screenshot it at the same time. So, uh, uh, yeah, have you screenshot it? Okay, yeah. so, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, 
we just talked about an update, uh, which is update two point one dot. I mean two point one point seven. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what can we say about those updates? How does it work? What are, what are we seeing here? What is Overlatch? We can. How does this stuff work? Yeah, the Quant Network doesn't have a blockchain. No, it's um, it, it doesn't. It, it, it's an operating system, and it's it, it's it's providing a service, um, kind of like, like like Windows or uh, or Apple or Mac OS or whatever you want to call it, and it just lets everything talk to everything seamlessly. Networks of networks, ecosystems yeah. to ecosystems. Um, you could probably let a toaster talk to an electric wheelchair with Overledger if you wanted to. I'm kind of exaggerating, but that's a, that, that's kind of what it is. And um, it uses API gateways uh, for decentralization. Yeah. Uh, those are the remote connector gateways, I should say. Um, that's going to be a staking option where everybody's very excited about. Um, it's not fully launched yet. Um, but yeah, Overledger is the, um, how do you say, offline, the native um, interoperability solution, which is being used by, for instance, SIA right now. And then we have to overlay your network. And that's the one that connects like SIA to, as an example, JP Morgan or EPSI or, or whatever. Yeah. And, and, and what it can do is it can literally seamlessly connect Ethereum, with, with Polkadot uh, and, and Bitcoin yeah. or create MDAPs. That's like a multi DAP and a DAP is obviously in, well, obviously. Decentralized uh, app. Yeah. But you can go multi-chain with that. So you can get Bitcoin security, XRP speed and Ethereum smart contracts into one very convenient um, MDAP. And, 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 and everybody can, can just use that as they see fit. You can develop your own uh, tools in that way um, and just grab features from certain things um, when needed. And what's very interesting is that um, in the case of Ethereum, that quant can actually uh, bring costs down by over 93% because they, they take everything um, off chain except for the creation and the closing of the contracts. So everything um, in between is, is, is simply being done um, on the Overledger network itself, which, uh, which makes it also very, very scalable. It uses Kubernetes, Kubernetes, uh, yeah, idea. Kubernetes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the same as Google for, for, for scaling. Um, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm this uh, huge tech buff, no, we are nowhere near the, the other people uh, that you hear talking about Quant. So you've seen the Twitter spaces, you've seen the roundtables. Yeah, with all the, the Gregs, other, uh, the Hungarians, and the ghosts. Exactly. Uh, and Bongo, also to a certain extent. Uh, yeah. And the, the, what's, the, um, what's that app called where you just talk? The, what's it called? The, it's just an app, like Club, Clubhouse. Oh, yeah. Greg uh, yeah. was talking about a clubhouse meeting as well. Yeah. yeah. So we're nowhere near them on a technical level. Yeah. Uh, bear in mind, barely a year ago, I knew what Binance was. That's kind of the level I'm, I'm operating on. But I do know pretty well how Quant works. And I do manage to see all the overviews. Of... If you want to get more tacky, there's uh, there's also <laughs> tacky. Uh, there's links to CryptoCoid's channel, Luke, uh, yeah. where he and Ghost um, go over all the tech stuff. They break down quant in, in, in one and a half hour episodes and they go like deep, 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 deep. Some stuff is yeah. a little bit dated, um, but, 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 but the essentials are, uh, sorry, English. Yeah. Can we, by the way, can we have a little break? No. Of just, uh, yeah. Okay. So we're back. We had some, uh, Technical difficulties. This also fits perfectly in our theme of um, playing it fast and lose with everything. Um, yeah, so we were talking about tech buffs and uh, technologically schooled counterparts in the social media and YouTube world and stuff. Um, yeah. So that's not us. We're just here for the for the memes. 
<laughs> yeah, for the memes, but yeah, also just providing an overview of what's going on every week. Yeah. Uh, talking through the most uh, important stuff, trying to make things easier or accessible um, because we do know roughly what's going on. We talk to all the people in the community, uh, some very high Q, in the high, there we go again, some very high IQ individuals, people who really know what's going on. Um, we're talking to the developers. Um, so the people who actually use Overledger and they, they can actually uh, explain to us how things work. <clears throat> and we are trying to convey that to our audience, which is yeah. Dutch and also English at the moment. So yeah, so what we're actually trying to, to do us. is yeah. just is just dumb everything down a bit. Try yeah, to exactly. e Eli yeah. 5 everything. That's also why the episodes are a bit longer. Um, yeah, it's just trying to make it simple, keep it simple. Um, yeah. So everybody can understand what's going on and, and, and not miss, miss a boat due to confusion. Um, no, or, but also, or, yeah, go ahead. No, but also, we are also not aiming to make it too simple uh, because some yeah. stuff is complex yeah. and should remain complex for a reason. We can dump everything down, but if we do that too much, we are going to oversimplify um, how things work. Yep. And that will create false expectations. Uh, yep. Not that we don't believe in them. We just think it's a bit more nuanced. Um, and things will take more time than, than you see on crypto Twitter or uh, some influencers uh, talking yeah. to you. Exactly. Yeah. FUD is easily made, but very difficult difficult to break. Um, yeah. But um, well, we're, we're, we're doing our best. I also have another disclaimer. That's all the obvious blah, blah, not financial advice and, and that kind of stuff. Um, also... Um, we don't do sponsoring. We don't do this for profit. There's, no, there's, there's nobody not. paying us. We will never, ever accept payment for anything on this channel. Although you can pay us, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no. Yeah, well, if, if you want to. No, we're not, we're you not can help, making any sponsored content uh, uh, for, for anyone. We're you just can help us out. Click the links in the description with, uh, yeah. with the referral codes and stuff. Sure. Um, yeah. if, if you want to do that, that's amazing. Um, but besides that, um, you can just expect us to be super biased towards Quant. Um, yeah. But uh, it's, yeah, our, it, it's our own bias. Yeah, exactly. It's our own bias. We're not being paid by anyone uh, to do this. And we're also not going... Well, sometimes we are going to talk about other cryptos. Yeah. Uh, because we think it's fun. Uh, it's relevant. <laughs> also for uh, the future, man. Most of us are going to be fucking millionaires. Yeah. And eventually you do want to we think you're going to be wanting to diversify a bit and yes. we are both hodlers we're not traders we're not traitors and traders no. <laughs> my pronunciation of, 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 of trader always sounds like traitor yeah. I always feel like I need to nuance that um, but we're not going that way so we're also not the, the pump and dump uh, type of folk um, no. But in the future, you, you probably want to um, put money in, in in different, well, not per se projects, um, but different venues. You want to get yeah. more verticals going. Um, how do you call this thing? Asset classes. That's yeah. the word. So you might want to want to get different asset classes. So you have multiple streams of income. Um, and when the world turns bullish again, we'll definitely um, look into that more and more. Uh, yeah. Also, don't hesitate to uh, to put questions in the comments. No, I've already done that on Instagram. Um, so I actually asked the public. Uh, we're yeah. also going to do that this episode a bit later. Yeah, uh, I have, we, have, we I have no more disclaimers. Yeah. yeah, let's let's no, do that. Yeah. yeah, okay, sure. And then we just start doing that. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, let's see what you guys put up for us. Oh, you and haven't even read it in advance. No, and also if we uh, start doing the same thing as in the Dutch podcast, then it gets a bit redundant uh, saying the same stuff. We, we mm. covered in the Dutch po podcast, yeah. we basically covered last week's news. Yeah. Um, so we talked about uh, the Twitter activity, activity of Quant. They were talking a lot about CBDCs there. Um, we were just talking about the, the macro environment as we do pretty much every week. Um, we we're talking about Kraken. the stuff. Kraken. <laughs> That's a Dutch joke. <laughs> it's Thursday. Yeah, there's this Dutch joke. It's every uh, Thursday. We'll probably get Kraken. We've been hearing that since uh, September. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, we're talking about Rafael Belchior's uh, latest 
uh, post on, on LinkedIn. They, they wrote an article. Uh, Belkir actually announced yesterday or the day before that he actually did an internship at Quant. He learned a lot there, wrote some academic papers, and has now joined Block Demon, I think, something like that. So we're not going to cover the same stuff, uh, but we are trying to do it a little bit different also yeah. for a Dutch public that they don't hear the same stuff. Uh, there, twice, there, could, so. there, there could be an overlap and it could be some redundancy, yeah. but we're trying to make different episodes. Yeah, um, exactly. there, there, There's enough going on in this space. Um, yeah, exactly. So we have enough to talk about. Okay. Well, um, let's... Okay. Uh, someone says, oh my God, please gang gang. Yo, yo. No. Uh... Just a bit, I can read all the reactions. I put a question. Um, okay, someone asks, where do I find the episodes? My uh, cast eating friend, well, on YouTube, we answered that already. She's Price eating prediction. friend. Price predictions, 2022 summer, we can talk about. Hi, when staking becomes available, how will staking rewards be paid? In Ethereum, no. In Quant, obviously, yeah. we're not, it's not going to be paid in ETH. That doesn't no. make any sense. Uh, gateways. No. Well, it, it could make sense because there are so many projects that actually do pay in ETH. So it's, it's eh, I mean, I'm, I'm in this looks thing and they also pay in, in, in wrapped ETH yeah. and their own shitcoin token. Okay. No, but, but, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, but Quant is not tied to Ethereum. They, they can run yeah. on any blockchain. Uh, yeah. So it's being, the gateway is run on, on Quant. It's not going to be an ETH. Uh, thing so that's oh. also the reason why you want to be in quant because of the gateway returns uh it, it incentivizes people to stake their quant into a gateway that lowers uh the supply and increases the total value locked and you will earn more quant doing so yeah um, but what's interesting about the gateways because everybody's looking forward to that very much because you're going to get paid in q and t um what everybody needs to remember is that there's like there's only 14.6 million QNT ever. All are minted, all are unlocked, not all are circulating. The vast, vast, vast majority is about like, what, 13.2 million? More? Uh, 13. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 13.4, there's 1 million still in the founder and 70K in the in the dump on the public uh, wallet, <laughs> the expenses so. wallet. Yeah. 70K. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, so, that's, so that's what's left. So that means that the rewards that we're going to be getting. It's not going to be the 800% APY inflated no, garbage just... stuff. All the gains you're going to get from in q and are going to be clean, pure, deflationary q and Yeah, that's the tokenomics. Um, any major announcements coming this year? Uh, we covered this. Jarno is walking away. Yeah, <laughs> shutting the door, crying baby. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, we can't hear it because of the... Your microphone is pretty good. Um, any major announcements coming this year? We covered this um, in the Dutch podcast. We also should cover it here. Actually, we talked about it in the last episode as well, uh, what we expect for 2022. Um, and to start with, um, that, that we still are wait we are still waiting for some stuff that should have been launched in 2021 at first. So uh, that's where it starts. So the gateways. Uh, are still to be released. Um, the the updates of of uh, Overledger, uh, some are still in the pipeline. ODAP, yeah, is coming. Yeah. Um, ODAP is the Open Digital Asset Protocol, which is kind of like the the, the 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 new internet, but then designed for money. Yeah, that's making it like really small and tiny. Um, it's obviously way more than that, but yeah. What's more? Um, so those What's are more pretty all big. All the uh, partnerships. I mean, yeah. there besides CIA, Lackchain. It's um, actually a, a, a different question. Like, uh, what's the strongest non-speculative partnership slash agreement for for Quant? So yeah, there we go already. I think um, both CIA and Lackchain are, are are humongous monstrosities already. I mean, yeah. CIA covers the entirety of Europe and the UK. Yeah, we should uh, say the Nexi Group. But now, by the way, it was CIA, but now it's the Nexi Group, which yeah. is. Uh, yeah, yeah that, that's absolutely true. Um, and they have like 800,000 kilometers of their own fiber optic CIA net um, all around the world. And it, it, Gilbert stated that literally any bank in the world, every bank in the world is in one way, shape, form connected to CIA, which makes it obviously huge. Um, yeah. and, and, and the other one is, uh, is Lackchain. 
Yeah. And if SIA covers the entirety of Europe and maybe even the world, um, Lackchain covers South America. And um, it also connects to the United States. Yeah. That was also a, a purpose of that. And they're going to make the Latin American dollar. Um, yeah, it's, it's um, what do you call it? In, uh, this is actually an English term. What do you call it? The, um, what migrant workers also pay to each other. So they, they go abroad and they send remittances. So it's actually, uh, Latchian is actually also uh, aimed at improving trade between uh, North America and South America. But it's also helpful for remittances. So sending money from back from the United States and Canada back to Latin and South America. Yeah, without paying seven um, percent in uh, in fees. Yeah, unless you're doing over to, Ethereum, uh, then you're Western paying. Western Union or something, or uh, yeah. yeah. So that's what they hope to improve. Uh, those are just some examples, and we are and and we obviously time. also know the Australian government. We know yeah. the UK government that um, we are also on their marketplace, like the only crypto company. Uh, that has been vetted by the yeah. UK Gov. Same goes for Oracle. We know for a fact that Oracle has certified um, Quant Networks over Ledger um, for, for, yeah. for for being the interoperability solution. Also, yeah. the only crypto project certified by Oracle, yeah. um, which is amazing because Oracle has how many customers? Four hundred eighty thousand. No, uh, four hundred thousand, I think, something oh. like that. Yeah, and. Um, it's yeah. So we are the the interoperability solution for the Oracle Cloud platform. So all the cloud services of cl services of Oracle are yep. being serviced through yeah. uh, Overledger. Which and is one huge. that is being forgotten a lot is Simba Chain. Yeah. Simba Chain was like a tiny little bitty company uh, with only three people working there. But when I got into Q and T, um, and now they are servicing. Uh, a, a large part of the United States Air Force yeah. with uh, logistics and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And that's what makes Quant so amazing. I mean, many people only see crypto as has, having to do with finances, but there are actually way, way more verticals than just finance. I believe 27 verticals are, are being targeted by Quant. Um, so including medical... Um, logistics, identity, government, all that stuff, the list goes on and on and on. So even if, 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 if we do not get the vast majority of finance, then there are still so many other things that, that, that need interoperability. Think of the European blockchain initiative that's, that, that's yeah. coming. Um, think of uh, BSN, um, the, the China blockchain. All those things all need interoperability and, 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 and because what they want is they want all their obsolete data center crap they the governments to actually communicate with the future with the internet there's nothing nothing that does that permission to permissionless and vice versa better than quant and um, that means that that it is most likely the the, the easiest the cheapest um, and now available uh, solution yeah. for all of those things Meaning that 14.6 million QNT is very few QNT. Yeah, yeah, and also something uh, a lot of people overlook, and what we got somewhere in July, I think, is SBI, SBI Holdings from Japan, one of uh, Japan's biggest banks, which has confirmed to be working with Quant. They dropped it somewhere um, in some web session. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that's just some of the stuff that we know of some of the non-speculative stuff, and there's obviously a lot still around the corner. Mama, it, and we yeah. didn't even and we didn't even cover all the partnerships at the <laughs> yeah. moment. There's still uh, we can also go into mobile and Moby, for example. Oh yeah, Moby. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah, Moby. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's too much. Yeah. Uh, much! Another question. The newest question is how decentralized is Q and T? Yeah, how that's decentralized interesting. Are we? Yeah, that's interesting, and I, I, especially because, in my opinion, decentralization is kind of a meme. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because what does it mean decentralization? If you look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin is so decentralized that there's nobody that can be held accountable if something goes wrong. Yeah. Who are you going to call? Yeah, Ghostbusters. Indeed. So that's a problem. 
Um, if you look at uh, the purpose of decentralization in general is to secure a network, to make it more safe because there are more points of verification, makes it harder to commit fraud or theft or whatever. Um, but what, what, what does decentralized more even mean? It's I ask the question a lot and, and, and you can go as far as Bitcoin or you can go as, 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 as close as quant. And what I mean with as close as quant is the treasury is a centralized part. And yeah. that's the reason why governments and big companies want to work with quant because Gilbert is accountable, because Gilbert has the connections and because um, he's, he's responsible. His company is responsible and um, if there are problems, people can call him and they can ask him questions. He's verified. He has a CV. He has a reputation. He has his network. Um, As a customer support. Yeah. Hello, I would like to phone Ethereum. Yeah. Yeah. And so, oh. so, so that means that there's, that there's a part of centralization, um, but that also makes it... Um, more reliable, more, more secure. Um, I, I can't find the right word for it. But what is decentralized is a remote connector gateway um, yeah. platform, the overledger network, meaning that everybody can run an, an RCG eventually. It's going to cost only $100, and that's to just separate the, the, the shaft from the wheat from the wheat so that not everybody just opens a gateway and starts fucking around on the network. Um, so there's a little bit of skin in the game. Um, and you need to be KYC, obviously, for a, for a gateway. But beyond that, we don't know that much, but it, it, it can be assumed that it can verify both permissioned and permissionless as they're like random nodes. It's going to be very technical, hard for me to explain right now. Um, but the decentralization will come because we will all run a gateway because you can yeah. simply stake your QT from a ledger and um, you will verify transactions. And, 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 and that's, um, in my opinion, plenty decentralized. But if you want to go the route of crypto and be 100% decentralized, um, you can probably go there, but you will never ever do business with governments. You will no. never do business with banks because banks need to point the finger if the power goes down. Yeah, true. And that's also the reason why uh, we invest here because it's something I've covered on Quant updates um, and also we've covered in the Dutch podcast and we're also need to cover someday here in this podcast. Uh, is about the networks, which are actually being adopted uh, by big governments, uh, big governments, no, sorry, big companies, I mean, by, by the large companies, uh, by governments. Um, and, and, and those are the ones which are enterprise focused. So we are not talking about all the crypto networks, uh, which you can buy on Binance, which you can buy in com Coinbase and Crypto.com. Those are the likes of Corda, uh, R3, Hyperledger, that stuff, and Enterprise Ethereum, uh, those are actually being used. Uh, whereas the the networks which you can just buy from any exchange, yeah. they just need retail hype. What a lot uh, of people forget is the tokens. And that's, yeah. Nobody wants them. No. That, Only that, we that do. is actually one of, the, <laughs> one of the main concerns for me with crypto, and that's the reason why we're in quant. So that's something we should also cover, um, but not now. If we... Different episode, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, let's see. Are there any new questions that people ask? There was also one interesting question. Let's see. Uh, oh. Someone asked, when Lombo? Yeah, that depends when you've entered. Oh, how much QNT do we have? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. I have enough. I also recommend everybody just keep your holdings to yourself. Yeah. I'm willing to disclose that I'm like 99% in QNT. 99. Okay. Point X. <laughs> I, I can disclose but... my amount uh, that's in my portfolio in Quant, but I'm not going to disclose any numbers. I mean, only a few people know how much I have, which include my parents. It's pointless. It's, and it's... I think 
besides my parents in Yarno, pro probably nobody knows how much I have, and I'm not going to tell anyone. There's no, there's no point. Why would you, why would you share? No. Why would you ask? Um, but to compare how big your bag is, how big someone else's bag is, it's. Um... And it, it also doesn't make any sense because if you've entered uh, Quant, let's say two or three years ago, it would have been different. You could just buy one Quant for a dollar. Uh, yeah. Which. But there was probably way, guarantees that way, you have well, more Quant. But yeah, you also have took a way bigger risk. Uh, but what everybody so forgets that is that the information that was available back then, um, what, 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 there was way less than there is yeah. now, and and people weren't willing to take risk based on that. Yeah, um, you entered but, in a full blown bear market, yeah. so it, it it was different. Yeah. And then there's also the thing with where do you live? I mean, people in the Netherlands were both in the Netherlands. Um, Without bragging, objectively, we earn a lot of money. The Dutch people are the fourth wealthiest people in the world. We covered that in a Dutch episode uh, a couple of episodes back. Um, yeah, if so, you don't so, go on holidays twice a year, you're considered poor, uh, just to uh, put it yeah, in perspective. So, so, yeah. so, so the Dutch have, 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 have a lot of money. Um, and if you compare that to somebody that lives in, I don't know, um, Central Africa, maybe, uh, you're, you're, you're going to have fewer you know, money spend and obviously fewer QNT to buy but if you have four QNT in those regions you're a king <laughs> you're going to be a king in a couple of years yeah and and, and if you have 400 QNT here um they'll kind of be the same i don't know i'm, I'm just jabbering now but um it's it's all relative it's all relative yeah. i mean if you have a hundred thousand euros you can live so many places in the world like a king for the rest of your life and in the Netherlands, no. you can't even buy a goddamn garage no. or a doghouse. No, it's relative. Um, then, uh, actually, a question. Can we find a genuine fault or concern with quants? So can we find something, pinpoint something, which is a genuine risk? And that's yeah. a mental exercise I've been doing, uh, yeah. like a thought experiment I've been doing a lot. Yeah. So it is something we could... We discuss still for the I, I, I think the biggest risk still it's getting getting the risk is being mitigated more and more as the company grows but if if Gilbert dies if, yeah. if I think I think if Gilbert uh, dies for some for whatever reason natural causes not natural causes I don't know that that would have a major major impact I think because of his connections because of the trusts uh, the trust he he has with with the lawmakers and with all the you know everything that 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 that, that makes quant that made quant um for me in the beginning a, a safe choice would would then just break away but now the company is well over 50 people um it's getting more decentralized um i don't know but besides that Beside Gilbert dying, I have a hard time finding um, weakness. I think just the fact that remote connector gateways are being postponed more and more is just a sign of them doing their due diligence. See, that's the thing. When you make something a little bit centralized, like, uh, like Quant Network, you have to get it right the first time. And um, just like a Solana bridge being uh, being hacked yesterday. What was that? 250 million in East Stolen? Yeah, I saw, I saw or, or minted, some something I like that. I don't really care, honestly. If, if, uh... if, no, but if something like that happens with Overledger Network while well, Sia is working with it, then you're going to have a big fucking problem. Then it's not magic internet money that's being stolen, but then it's government money being stolen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So... If, if if anything, everything takes a little bit longer. And what might also be a weakness for many crypto degen is that you need to do a KYC. Mm -hmm. You cannot just hook up your, uh, your MetaMask with all your uh, money you need to launder and join the Overledger network. No. And you will be yeah. accountable for your actions. But, but yeah, but that's already a thing that... I think, well, it's a pretty a genuine concern about it. Look, I think the most 
general concern that I have is the fact that we are still not the we will probably not be detached from the crypto markets for the foreseeable future. Mm. As in when panic really breaks out, and sure, uh, uh, we have moments where we are stronger than a market, uh, which is brilliant. No, Siri, I didn't ask you anything. <laughs> uh, She's always listening, dude. Everything yeah, is doxed, always, always. Yeah, I'm always. Yeah, I have it put on. I just want to talk to my phone every now and then. I'm lonely. No. <laughs> no. Uh, but at the moment, like total market panic breaks out, that would be uh, for me a risk. So I've always said, well, while the project may be brilliant, you're still in a crazy, crazy space. Uh, crypto is insane. Uh, the craziest stuff can happen. So that is a genuine concern that I have. And also something that is not necessarily a risk at the moment, but something for the for the longer term is the is competition coming up. And is that really a genuine concern? I am not sure for both of them because I think Quant can actually move up a lot still. We are still insanely undervalued. I think even after today's push, uh, we're still at rank sixty or something we moved all the way down to 80 now we're at 60 we're barely at 2 billion uh market cap which is nothing if you compare it to the big the, the large caps uh in, in this market and then when it comes to competition we're also going to go for this in later episodes um there will be competition it will be a risk but how realistic is it that that competition is going to be much stronger. And we're going to cover that later. But I do think that those two things, so competition and market conditions are a risk. And with all the other things, I'm not sure. We've covered a lot. There's a ton of people who've gone over everything since 2018, since the initial coin offering. They really did their research. They really know what's going on. Uh, yeah. And once you understand all that, you will know that all the risks are being calculated in I, I, I just are virtually up, non-existent. I just came up with another risk. Imagine remote connected gateways going live. Mm -hmm. And everything is in production. And there's a major, major vulnerability. Yeah. I think if one big loss or big mistake or a leak occurs um, because many of the customers are the enterprise variety um, that could be very, very damaging. And I think that no. what then will happen is that the crypto uh, FUD will, will, will destroy q and price even more and the reputation perhaps. I think, I think, damage to the reputation of quant network um legitimate damage that, that that could be a very big problem i think if if, yeah. if, if an sec type thing would happen with quant it can't not not the sec but if something like that would happen um that would be a very big problem but that would be definitely a, a, a black swan kind of thing mm -hmm. um that yeah so that ties into the question that's being asked here. Is there any chance regulations could unexpectedly disrupt quant? It's being asked. Something we will also dive in later, but we can give you a sneak preview of our position. Yeah, everybody's talking about the quantum computing thing. No, regulations we're talking about, not quantum computing. What's a regulation? Like crypto regulations, like uh, stricter laws. Uh, oh, regulations. Yeah. Sorry. What, what what did I say? Regulations. Regulations. Yeah, I thought it was like a, a recollection no. kind of. Rec no, 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 no. Regulation. Regulations. Ah, Regulations. sorry. No, it's fine. Um, nothing. Gilbert saw no. what was going to happen ten years in advance. He created the standards. So he's creating the rules, and he no. created the software to match that. Um, talking. ISO TC307 for blockchain standards is built by him. He knew about Bitcoin. He, he briefed the UK government on Bitcoin in 2008. Yeah, um, even and, before Bitcoin launched in the market. Yeah. 
He saw yeah. the white paper and uh, a he, couple uh, of weeks after its le- release and ordered yeah. the UK government. Actually, was it was at HM's treasury at the moment. Yeah. That moment, just well, I was there in the heat of the financial crisis, and he actually uh, summoned his department to study the potential impact of Bitcoin. Uh, a couple of no weeks threat. after. <laughs> No, and, and they, they, they analyzed that it wasn't a threat at the moment, which was yeah. in 2008. Uh, that's impressive. Yeah. And no, uh, the, the, the fun stuff with Quanti is they're doing everything f- according to the rules. Uh, they're not yeah. doing the stuff that, that Ripple is doing, no. uh, <laughs> yeah, which will not is see... illegal in a way, and we'll see what the SEC thinks of it. You will not see any promotions of the no. token by the team ever. You will not see... Um, influencers being incentivized to talk about it ever um no you, all, all, all that shit will will never happen um no. they will never give away free tokens they will never give discounts no nope. um sadly <laughs> from what tokens it's too scarce dude no, i, I would scarce. like some free quants i could talk about it all day if I could yeah <laughs> no it's the, the regulations is not where the problems are going to be not at no. all. Um, um, and, and there's another question about this. Oh, yeah. It kind of ties into regulations. And um, so a lot of crypto people have issues with regulations because it will uh, regulate their shitcoin fest where you can just gamble. It will well, it kind of will regulate their casino, which isn't a bad thing if you ask me. But yeah, there's something else. Uh, also, a question which is being asked a lot from the crypto community. So, hey, there's another... Uh, uh, ladybug ladybug here yeah my dog eats ladybugs he yeah. saves them my dog hey, eats I, them. I'm, I'm gonna save this one as well uh but in the meantime uh Jarno can ponder the following questions yeah uh, CBD, cbdc's friends or enemy of the crypto revolution oh interesting okay yeah. so See, what's your take on that yeah um, in the meantime i'm gonna save a ladybug again you do that yeah there, there we are again people are are, are confusing two things, in my opinion. And that is because we, they make money in crypto. Crypto is only aimed at money, which is simply not true. Um, CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, um, are about money, are about transferring value from, from A to B. Um, maybe do some uh, some payments, do some settlements, whatever. Um, if you are XRP, that could very well be a problem. If you are Bitcoin, that could very well be a problem. But crypto is so much bigger, and and what what what, what people tend to forget is everybody's always talking about the finance vertical, like I stated earlier. But a vast majority of projects, worthwhile projects are focusing on different stuff. Take, for instance, VXV. They're focused on um, information, data. And the token is being used to finance their operations. But the product, what the token is is created for, the utility token, same as QNT, has nothing to do with finance. They're not a means of payment. And and people keep confusing that, 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 that because it holds value, it, 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 it's getting competition from, for instance, CBDCs or, or Bitcoin. Yeah. It's, it's not even it's the same. I would say it's playground. It's not even the same, the same world, the same universe that they operate in. Quant no. never, ever, ever competes with Bitcoin, ever. No. Just, it's just for coin market thing. cap, and Quant will win. But it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's I not think the CBDCs same. are just an addition uh, uh, to the entire crypto revolution. It's just a government offspring. Of the same technology that's being used here, uh, crypto because it's is programmable money. You you can with you can use those smart contracts to just offer certain right. stuff that's uh, under a lot of bureaucracy at the moment. You can just regulate that. I think that's what's going to happen. And also got a DM uh, asking us again about that tweet from Quant. We in the Dutch podcast we talked about the privacy. So Quant actually put out a statement that uh, a common misconception with uh, of a wrong assumption is, is that uh, CBDCs will kind of jeopardize privacy. Um, and they say, well, that's not really the case. So same thing goes here. I, I don't think that, that CBDCs are necessarily going to be much different than cash in the way oh. it works. 
uh, because at, in the current system you still have on and off ramps, or at the moment you go to an ATM and you you get cash, you're still in a centralized environment where they can trace and track what you're doing. So but you, you know what it is. Common I, misconception here. Yeah, I I told you the other day as well in the previous podcast. People, uh, FUD is easily created, and yeah. and and the more difficult the subject is, the easier it is to FUD, and and everybody wants like to. Have, yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the tissue and then, oh, this is the fat and you look at it and it's like, oh, that's substantial. But then once you go through it, you're like, oh, actually you, you break the oh, yeah. you break the fat very easily. That's the oh, and, yeah. and and that's the privacy the... thing is 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 easy because nobody wants to see um their privacy um being violated. That's why people close the curtains, that's why we shower with the door locked. Ooh, yeah. ooh, privacy. But on the internet we give everything away. All the time. Yeah. Yet when 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 somebody asks questions or they, or they come with an offer, then we're all no privacy. We need privacy, and and yeah. and and as easy as it can be taken, it can be given, because yeah. anonymizing something isn't all that difficult. Yeah. It's just it's just a matter of design, um. But but the fud of the privacy is 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 easy fud because it's very difficult to debunk. Yeah. It's really hard to comfort people. It's really hard to um, to convince people when they decided that something uh, something is the way it is, yeah. same as convincing you that cash is not anonymous. I mean, you pay with it, you leave a fingerprint on it, and I can track if you had it, yes or no. Simple example. Um, people still think it it, it 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 guarantees privacy. It's it's all a bunch of BS. Who cares? <laughs> if you if you click accept cookies on Facebook, you're properly duxed to the entire world. Everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, then there's a question uh, from a Dutch guy, and he asks, at which level would you sell quants? So at which level are we going to take profit? Uh, mm. I'm not really going to answer this question because I honestly, frankly, don't know at no. the moment. Um, <laughs> I, I, it's... I, I gave an example in Quamfi Lounge. Yeah. And we are holders, hodlers. Oh. So... Hold all. Yeah. yeah. For instance, say you buy an apartment building. The apartment building is now worth 100,000 euros for easy math. It has 100 apartments in it. Every time when the price doubles, do you then sell half your apartments or do you just hold on to it? That's the question. And if you're a trader and you buy 50 different apartment complexes in all different parts of the city, and you haven't done any research on them, of course, when the price goes up, you sell every now and again because you need to mitigate the risk for all the bad choices you made. Not everything's a winner. But if you do your due diligence and you're in a project like, like UNT, why would you try and time the top? Why would you try and... Um, I'm, 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 I'm not sure. Uh, I, do, what I, I, yeah? I did think of this example that you gave and you gave yeah. it a couple of times, but... I mean, there's there's obviously a difference between a, a very illiquid assets such as a house or an apartment and something that you can it's a sell metaphor, on dude. the market. It's but a it's metaphor. a metaphor. It's a, okay, it's a metaphor. Right. I, I mean, it's the same with Tesla. If you buy Tesla stock or you buy Amazon stock, are you, are you going to sell every time it appreciates just to break even or to, to get your initial out or... Or or whatever. Yeah, why would you why not, would you not, mitigate your? I I I don't get not that. Not really. But I indeed, like there is a difference between yeah. um, having a trading back. Like today as well, I was looking at the price and I was like, ah, I should sell probably. But that's and yesterday, uh, my my body was screaming the same thing. But it's just with a kind of a back that I have that I can easily sell and buy back. But I'm not going to swing my entire back. I, I would be insane to do that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it wouldn't make sense for us. And I think Yarno at least is going to sell way beyond the one K level. Yeah. Um, and and for me, it's I, I sold. It will really depend on my personal finances at that moment. I um, sold one Q and T yesterday. I had a bill to pay. Yeah. It's um. I yeah. I, I don't have a job anymore. By choice. You're tired. Nah, not, not really. My wife still works. She loves what yeah. she does. I did not. Um. So we sell like maybe a Q and T a week now regardless of price, but I'm not going to yeah. sell big batches in advance, um, trying to time a top or a bottom. Um, I, I, I don't like the stress. 
I do think when we get to Euphoria that we have back in September, I, I will probably sell a portion, but it all depends on how we get there, what happens, what's the news, what's the market yeah. conditions. It's all very fluid to me. Um, yeah. And it's the same reason why I didn't sell anything back in September, uh, because at some point you're just overloaded with information. You know what's coming. Uh, and at that point, it was very reasonable to assume that certain updates were coming faster. And I could have, I couldn't imagine that they that they didn't do it uh, as soon as I expected them to. No. So yeah, that's the reason I didn't take any profit in September. Looking back, that looks stupid, that decision, but you just handle in the heat of the moment. And that's the way I look at it right now. So yeah. Last question, shame, I need to go. To... I need to go yeah. pick up my daughter from school. Fair enough. I think, honestly, that's kind of it. People have just, I, I just put it up one hour before the podcast. Oh, oh uh, someone asked if we can have uh, a guest over in the podcast. I think we'll definitely do that in the future. Um, yeah, definitely in the to... Dutch. Yeah. And in... probably. No, we, the... we can have guests. Uh, yeah, that's something we uh, we should do. Also, in the English community is bigger because it's an international community, assuming you speak yeah. English. Um, yeah, definitely. That would be lovely to do. Um, we're also just experimenting right now um, our, our yeah. main focus is Dutch but doing this for a wider audience because we see that there is clearly demand for it is lovely so we're happy to do this uh, and we think it's a unique concept uh, so yeah just me say you can see me saving ladybugs and stuff so yeah <laughs> um, me chasing okay. the dog no. I think um, I think Jorna needs to go pick up his do daughter from school yeah. and we are going to uh, round it up yeah, Let us here. know what you think. Uh, you can you can listen to us on YouTube. You can listen to us on Spotify. No, not Spotify. That's uh, no on, on Telegram. Not, I mean, not yet. We're considering yet. it. Yeah. We're considering that. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know on Instagram if you're there. Let us know on YouTube if you're there. Let us know on in the Comfy Lounge or something if you're there. We'd love to hear your feedback, and uh, well, we'll speak to you soon if it's a success. At least. Stay comfy. Stay comfy. <laughs>